Welcome back to the channel. We've got an inbox review of the Fokker G1A, so we're going to have a look inside the box, see what's um, involved, uh, look at some of the detail parts as well. Obviously, we can't do much as far as um, construction is concerned, but we can certainly have a look at how the uh, parts breakdown has been um, designed. Uh, this is a new release uh, for Micromer which is a Ukrainian company and this is a 148 scale of a very unusual Dutch uh, heavy fighter with the twin boom tail very much like a sort of mix of a P30, um, P38 and almost a B25 in, uh, as far as how the uh, front of the nose looks. So let's get in and have a look. Starting with the instructions it's the typical uh, way of, of doing them as far as we've got two languages, um, I'm not sure what this one is at the top, it's uh, something Eastern European and then down here we've got the English and it runs through there just telling you about um, the development and how it was used and the implementation. Um, I'm not sure there was a huge amount used, I think when it says here when Germany attacked the Netherlands on the 10th of May 23 G1s were in service, uh, 12 with the 4th fighter group at Alkmaar and 11 with the 3rd fighter group at Rotterdam and uh, the G G1s were successful in destroying several Junkers Ju-52s uh, during the early stages of the German invasion but by the fifth day when Dutch resistance ended only a single example remained airworthy so they got a got a bit of a battering unfortunately as you can imagine uh, so starting off we've got parts breakdown here which is um, very uh, very much in the usual way and um, shows you all of your different sprues and they are numbered and I would imagine that's where you're going to refer to the numbering because they're not going to have numbers on the sprues. We've also got a nice de decal sheet here with the large um, orange triangles which is uh, the Dutch national insignia and we've got a photo etch set there as well. Now unusually construction begins with the two engines and we've got lots of uh, detail going in there so the actual uh, cylinder heads and the engine block there is is split into two halves you join that together well then we've got parts for the engine going on and then the wires going on there as well and then the actual end of the engine going on through the cowling. Uh, then we're starting uh, to build up parts of the cockpit. So this is running through, there's a bit of photo etch going on there as well, uh, making up for a bit of a strange shape again. It looks like one of those suspended cockpits with lots of framing around the um, footwell. And we've got spars going on here as well, which are gonna help hopefully for when we get the wings on. Then when we actually got the cockpit fully together we've got a little bit of internal detail here from the underneath there may actually be I don't know what that is might be landing gear wells there's a bit of detail on the underside there and then onto the inside of the fuselage and then we start to build all of that up it's showing you light grey for the colour on the inside of the cockpit and then the tailplane section is coming together as well as parts for the landing gear and the wheel wells a uh, little bit of construction here with the wings as well in two halves. We've got a lower section going on there. Then the two uh, twin boom tails are cementing the landing gear and wheel wells together with the engine cowling going on the front. Then we start to bring it all together with the fuselage, the tail booms, and then it's all joined together with the tail plane, the lower parts of the uh, wing section going on, and we finish then with... Um, well, uh, with wheels. Then we've got two schemes included in this one, and this is for uh, 319, uh, which is, I think it says over here, yeah, this, so this is your A scheme, 307, uh, which is, the schemes we've got are 312, 307, and 319. And it just mentions down here that um, on the 319 scheme, uh, the beige and green colours were reversed, which is something you get sometimes in these marking schemes. They sort of have an A and a B scheme. And um, this is also catering for the decal uh, application. So we've got logos for the propellers and the large triangles, again, with the identification marks and orange on the uh, rudder there as well as uh, and also a small Fokker uh, inscription on the fin there. Colour call outs are FS numbers and Humbrol. Now we do get a full mask sheet here and this is on Orma mask uh, similar to what Montex uh, masks come on and this is very well uh, printed and you have two sets so I'm assuming it's for inside and outside 
but I don't know looking at this whether you'd want to really worry about doing the inside. It's not really a conventional um, breakdown, it's not like a canopy being open. We'll have a look at that later. It's very very well done. You can see it quite well uh, cut, no issues there. You've got a resealable bag which gives you the photo etch parts and the decals. So looking at the photo etch, it's very uh, finely done and very thin as well, quite flimsy. And there's numerous parts on here which will add uh, finesse and fine details including harnesses and this uh, very fine parts here which is, is what I was seeing on the underside. It might be the um, internals of the wheel well. Not sure. But it looks very good. It's very well done. And then the decals we've got it looks like an afterthought with these uh, looks like a duck symbol there or goose lying down horizontal and then uh, this says printed in Ukraine by uh, Decograph which is probably in-house by the looks of it and yeah everything looks very good it's quite raised um, I don't know that could be that could be for numerous reasons there but you can see the carrier film so it might be a little bit thick uh, so I don't know how that will affect them going down but all in all the register is very good. There is a little blemish here, I'm not sure what that is, it looks like there's something underneath the deco on the paper, so hopefully that won't cause too much of a problem. And starting with the sprues, these are the clear parts and it's uh, quite unconventional in the way that they've moulded uh, the fuselage halves of the, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, the, the bit at the front, it's the cockpit really, um, in, in all clear part, uh, so that caters for all of the windows that run around here. We've also got a canopy section that goes on the top there, and then we've got some, um, I think that's on the tail, yeah, th so at the rear is all glass, and then there's a, a glass um, section here, which is this bit in two halves. We've also got a few other small parts as well that make up part of the internal structure, also moulded in clear. So um, the mask set is very well... Um, received in this kit it's, it's going to become um, very useful so hopefully the considering it's the actual company that's um, cut those they should fit very well that's the plan you'd like to think so but we'll see that when we actually get into the build uh, detail across here is quite hard to see but it does look very good there's quite fine recessed panel lines um, good definition on the windows there as well on the uh, the frames and where it is clear it is it's very very um transparent there's no hazing or anything so all looks very good and now this is where having the internal uh, masks is going to come in very useful because you, you're going to want to spray the inside it being clear so therefore if you just um, put the masks on before you're able to spray it and it's, it's, it, it should all work out very well and this is a, a good way of getting around having to put in windows and they often don't fit certainly on short run kits so it's much better probably to go down this route then we've got the tail boom sections again fine panel lines going all the way down there uh, hard, well, no flash whatsoever very crisply molded uh, nice and smooth as well very polished on the outside all looks very good these are um, Oh, I was going to say they're duplicates, they're not. So we've got the nose end here uh, with all the gun barrels uh, with the holes. It looks like quite a mean um, aircraft. It was coming straight at you. And then we've got a few side panels over here and uh, what looks like radios and a few bits for the inside of the cockpit. Quite a dark um, choice of colour for the plastic, but uh, that's not a problem. Looks very good. Then we've got the wings. So we've got that for the lower parts of the wings there and then we've got two different sections here for the upper parts so these have the nacelles built into them and then this section here is this bit on the underside and then this bit here is that bit and that's how the construction goes together it's sort of like that with that small bit there going on um, underneath the uh, in between the nacelle which is taken up with the boom here so it goes like that that makes sense and then the small bit fills in the gap the other side and again uh, very fine recessed panels all over here um, well there's actually no, not that it's very smooth on the top of the wing but where there are panels it's very well done uh, we've got good fabric texture there as well on the ailerons looks very nice and then on the underside we've got the aileron again and we've also got the flaps that would open up very finely done as well 
Then we've got two duplicate sprues here, which uh, have parts for the engines and the landing gear. So you've got two cowlings, uh, rear parts to the engine or the uh, wheel wells as well, parts of the propellers, which are separate, as well as quite a few bits for the engine as well. Then we've got another set of duplicate sprues again, with uh, things that you're going to double up on with the wheels, the engines, um, and uh, landing, uh, landing gear doors, and a few other small parts. No flash whatsoever on this, even on the fine bits. Everything's moulded very well. Oh, there is a tiny bit of flash there, actually. And that's more a sort of unconnected sprue nib as opposed to anything else. Um, but the parts are extremely well done. And the cylinder heads are very, very nice as well. So just a bit of clean up on that. Uh, join there where the two halves go together. Then we've got the centre section for the uh, tail there. So that goes in between the two tail booms and they join together at the end with the horizontal stabilisers either side. So this is the top part and the lower part with all the access panels and then a few other small bits going around here. We've got a um, two piece tail wheel section there with the wheel already joined. Again, as you can see, it's very nicely done. It's catching all the panel lines there in the light. And then this is the last sprue. And this looks like mostly cockpit parts here. And again, the same level of detail and cleanliness is running right the way through here. So it's good to see. We've got an instrument panel there, a few radio parts for the side and um, some control consoles. And I think these two parts here uh, make up the sides of the cockpit as well. And that is a run through the uh, kit from Micromere here, the uh, Fokker G1A in 148 scale. Looks to be a very promising kit of a very unusual aircraft. Um, if any of you are into the Dutch Air Force, I would imagine you wouldn't have expected to see a kit like this uh, coming out anytime soon. So what a wonderful subject to choose. And um, it's good that these, uh, these, these companies are choosing to produce these actual unusual kits it's much more interesting certainly from my point of view uh, and, and I like these these kind of aircraft whether I know much about them or not is very interesting this is a little bit outside of my um, my knowledge field I'm, I'm, bu I'm building this for a person um, so uh, it's very enjoyable to be able to do a project like this this is right up my street so hopefully that's been of interest I'll leave you with some pictures now of the uh, different parts and I'll see you in the next video